Um, Chick Keller here is the curator for the Jemez Mountains Herbarium, uh, which is housed at the Los Alamos Nature Center. He first learned about plants from his father while he was living in the Eastern United States. Uh, and Chick has been working with plants in the Southwestern US for about 36 years now. With that, I'll, uh, it looks like we, we see your wonderful presentation here. I'll go ahead and unmute you. Uh, I'll turn it over to Chick now and I'll monitor for any questions or comments uh, coming in on that chat. So let me know if you need anything and enjoy. Hello, can you all hear me? I hope, hope you can. Um, the title, of course, is uh, something interesting because it has a little thing in parentheses after it. How many of you know why I would put tra-la after that? The flowers that bloom in the spring, tra-la. Um, from Gilbert and Sullivan Sullivan's Mikado, uh, there's a plot where the young people are trying to convince the old guy to marry the the ugly lady so that they can get married. And they tell him it's really like the flowers this spring. And just for fun, please bear with me, I thought I'd let you see what that was like. The flowers that bloom in the spring, tra-la, promise, promise, breathe promise of merry sunshine. As we merrily dance and we sing, tra-la, we welcome the hope that they bring, tra-la, of a summer of roses and wine, of a summer of roses and wine. And that's what we mean when we say that a thing is welcome as flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra-la, la 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 ha la 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 ha the flowers that bloom in the spring. <coughs> With apologies to Gilbert and Sullivan, um, <coughs> but indeed, the flowers that bloom in the spring do all those things for us. After the winter, we go out and look for little blossoms here and there. In our presentation, we're going to give you the first set of flowers that are blooming now, and then predict some that will bloom in a few weeks and then bloom by early May. Um, the uh, names of all the flowers uh, and the pages in the book, uh, the, the flower book, Plants of the Hamus Mountains by Terry Fox and Craig Martin, a splendid set of books, um, are going to be sent to you as an attachment. I couldn't get them on the screen. Okay, this one uh, is really pretty and it's the first thing. Everything else is dead and suddenly come out these gray looking leaves and these beautiful purple flowers. Uh, and it's called wafer parsnip, and don't ask me why, but it's a nice name. Um, and it's in the parsley family. We'll show you one other one like that. And this one's named for Constance, whoever Constance was. Uh, however, it's already pretty much done blooming and it's gone to seed. And you can see these wings on it. And its name, um, in, in Greek is Simoteris, P-T-E-R-I-S, like pterodactyl, and it's because these seeds are winged. Uh, another one blooming right now, uh, by the way, that one you'll only find down in White Rock. <clears throat> Most of these plants you'll only find in walk, White Rock so far, because Los Alamos is taking its good old time to warm up. But this one, Clematis columbiana, um, is blooming uh, uh, all over the place in Los Alamos. Uh, a good place to look for it is uh, below the Nature Center uh, on the trail down in Acid Canyon. Or if you go to the North Community and take the Mitchell Trail, but go right along the perimeter trail down toward uh, Ponderosa Estates, you, uh, we've seen as many as 100 of them blooming. A uh, be very beautiful thing. One of the things about them is you can see all these hairs. Why would they be so hairy? Well, they come up when it still is freezing and you can have freezing moist air going by. And in order to keep these plants from freezing, they reach out these hairs and the tips of the hairs uh, are the condensation points for all the moisture. And so you get frost on these things. Well, when you take a gas and turn it into a solid, it gives up heat. And so it actually warms up the area. Quite an interesting uh, ploy. In a few weeks, it'll go to seed. 
<laughs> we'll get what I call these Dr. Seuss plants, where it has these seed heads. So uh, if you see these, uh, probably in May, you'll know it's looking past. Another one that's blooming uh, in White Rock night right now is James's hidden flower. And it's called hidden flower because the really floral parts are hidden way down inside this little, these little yellow parts. Um, a good place to see this is uh, at Overlook Park. You can walk along those paved trails uh, by the, the, that uh, parallel the road down to the Overlook and you'll see these guys blooming. But there are other places too. Um, now, there's a really interesting place to see a bunch of plants that you probably won't see many other places. As you drive to Overlook Park, the first turn is to the parking lot for the Blue Dot Trail. Uh, right at that turn on the right hand side, uh, there's a little walkway and just sort of a grassy, weedy patch. And in that grassy, weedy patch, there are a whole bunch of really interesting plants. One of them, this is about as big as a dime right here, is a thing called fieldalism. And you can see that. You'll see this one here. Uh, uh, down there uh, at some of those picnic areas, one place under some pine trees, but other places uh, you can see them uh, if you walk along the rim trail, is a bushy plant that has little tiny yellow flowers on it. This again is about the size of a dime. Uh, and the leaves, as you can see, are the stem goes out and has leaflets, and the leaflets have leaflets, and that makes it a thing called flickseed. Uh, Descarania is a big deal name for a whole bunch of yellow mustards that just sort of stick up in the, in the air. And you can see that one down there. Uh, Easter daisy, uh, I haven't found any at, White, at Overlook Park, but they are uh, being found in Los Alamos and other places. It's a very low thing, they don't have any stems, and they start growing about like this and then finally turn out, and sometimes they're in beautiful clusters like that. So the Easter daisy's a uh, really very, very uh, welcome flower. Uh, down at Overlook Park along uh, the beginning of the rim trail, these guys are starting to bloom. You can see the leaves come out and they just have these little extra leaflets on them. And this beautiful, beautiful uh, pea-like plant. So this is a pea, a Missouri milk bench, vetch, and that blooms early. Here's a good look at it up close. You can see the sort of the banner and the tongue and what have you. And here's another look at it. Uh, if you walk down either the blue dot or the red dot trail, as you're getting halfway down or more, you'll find another one of these milk vetches, same kinds of leaves, but very small plants. A, a dime is about this big. So they're the flowers are very small. It's an annual, but there's sometimes a whole lot of them down there. And this is named for the botanist Nuttle. Um, on your way down uh, right away and other places, but especially on the red dot and blue dot trail, you will see a lot of these uh, beautiful pink clusters of flowers. And here they are up close. Uh, Wright's vervain or verbena. Um, and, uh, uh, that's one of the real show-off plants down there. Um, and later on in the year, we'll see it higher up. All over town, no matter where you go, you'll find this little guy. It's called crane's bill because the seed pods look like a crane's head with a long bill. Um, or fillery, I guess, because of the, the nice look way the, the uh, plants look. It's not very big. Again, a dime is about this size. And... Uh, but it's all over the place. It, it grows in disturbed soil, and you can find it blooming in February. You can find it blooming uh, almost all year round, and it's blooming like crazy right now. Um, here's that pen bit. Uh, and remember, I was showing you that alyssum. There's a little alyssum plant, and here's another one. Uh, and again, a dime is about this big. Uh, and hen bit has these multiple flowers, but it's like a, it's like a sage plant and it's in the, in the sage family. <clears throat> um, it grows the, it, uh, many places, but again, as you're driving into, into Overlook Park, if you just stop uh, right where, the turn, where you turn right to go to that big parking lot for Blue Dot Trail, that little land right along there, uh, 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 paralleling the paved road, 
has these two plants and, and so several others more. Um, here's one uh, that some people have already found. I haven't found it yet, but it's got a tube, long tube, and then a beautiful set of flowers that are sort of snipped, cut. And so it's called fringed pecoon. Lithospermum is the Greek word for stone seed. When this thing goes to seed, it gets these little tiny seeds that are just as hard as stones. They're really quite remarkable. Uh, now we're finally coming back up to Los Alamos. If you walk up, especially uh, uh, via Canyon right away, um, going up that, that road, these guys are just starting to come into bloom now. They have a very interesting set of leaves that sort of one points out and then they have little, little side leaves on them. Um, and this cluster of beautiful flowers. And when they're coming, uh, sometimes they're blue, as you can see, but when they're coming into bloom, the little uh, sepals covering them are also purple. So you can see that. This is a very nice one. And it finally grows. Again, a dime is only about this big here. This plant's a little bigger. Um, you probably all know Kinnikinnik. Arctostephalus uva ursi, which means berry, um, and it gets this heath-like flower on it. A dime now is about this big, um, and it grows in big mats of these green flowers, green plants, and they don't all bloom, but you can find these beautiful uh, hanging down uh, uh, blooms on them right now. This is again a Chemazon Trail, lots of different places uh, around Los Alamos. The same place, uh, Creeping Oregon grape. Um, they, they have these gorgeous holly like leaves, which during the winter often get very red. They lose their green. Um, and they're in little clusters like this. And again, a dime is about this big. So they're bigger clusters. In some places, this is just all over the place. And so, uh, but Chemazon Trail is a good place to see this one. Um, uh, lots of places around town. Uh, this one's not quite blooming yet, but almost. Some people have seen it. A dime now is about this big. These flowers are very small. Uh, but it's Mountain Lover, which is another one of these evergreens that grows under the Ponderosa in bunches and gets these flowers on them. Uh, it's well worth looking down uh, uh, very carefully to see them. Uh, but you can see them in almost any of the side canyons around Los Alamos. Uh, here's a, an interesting one. Lots of basal leaves, long stems, and at the top of the stems, these little four-petaled uh, flowers, Fendler's Rock Cress. This one turns out to be very pink. Usually it's whiter. Again, lots of basal leaves, and then it goes up, and then it has these, these little four-petaled flowers, crucifers, because of the four petals. Here it is up really close, and it's Sort of fuzzy, but again, the four petals. This one you can see just almost anywhere uh, uh, in the woods around Los Alamos. You just sort of come upon it, and there it is. Sometimes, however, when you come upon it, it looks like this. People think these are yellow flowers. They aren't flowers. This is a rust that infects the, the Fender's rock crust. And uh, that rust gives you this lovely yellow thing. It's usually not very big. Here a dime is about this big. Uh, but what it does is it infects the plant and the plant doesn't produce any flowers or seeds when that happens. But people are always curious as to what that is when they see it. Uh, back down in Los Alamos, <coughs> back down to White Rock and that place just before you turn into uh, the Blue Dot Trail Park, toward the Blue Dot Trail Park parking lot. That same place where the hen bit was in the alyssum is this, uh, they're almost purple, very light purple, blue mustard, with a wonderful name, Corospora tail. And this can get quite large. The ones down in that weedy area aren't very big, but other places in White Rock, people see them and they're, they're uh, fairly tall, you know, a, a foot. Okay, let's move up to flowers that aren't blooming yet or may not be blooming for a little while. Uh, now, they can bloom depend earlier and they will blend. They, they will, these kinds of flowers will extend on into May. So you're allowed to see these for quite a while. Um, one is uh, Golden Smoke. 
Um, and it has uh, these beautiful green leaves, glows in a bunch like this. I have a nice picture of one of these with snow all over it because it had bloomed in early April and the snow got it. And here's what the flowers look like. They have a long tail like that. One. It's a, a different plant from all the other ones. It's pretty much in its own family, but it's very uh, around town. And so you're you know, always glad to see golden smoke. Another golden is golden pea. This one's not quite blooming yet, but it'll get going. And it's another pea plant, but you can see it's very copious and yellow instead of pink and what have you. Again, up in Los Alamos, so uh, almost anywhere in the woods. Uh, now, uh, if you go back down to White Rock, especially if you go below the rim, but even on, uh, on the rim of the canyon, uh, there are these uh, bushes that tend to be taller than wide, and they have beautiful flowers. They have a little stemlet, little tiny stemlet, and then a big petal, and there's four of them sometimes five, but mostly four. And this is Fendler's Fendler bush. It's really beautiful flowers when they bloom. And, uh, but it's definitely a white rock plant a little later on. Uh, back up in town, uh, pretty soon, we're gonna start seeing this beautiful clematis. It's a vine and you can see here, it's festooning all over the place. Um, uh, and so while, you know, it, if you walk by, you'll notice this right away, but it's well worth it going up and looking at the flower itself. It's quite a beautiful flower and it'll last well into June. Uh, both White Rock and Los Alamos have this uh, evening primrose, uh, which doesn't have a stem. It has lots of uh, leaves and this is big. A dime is only about this big. Um, and uh, they bloom only one day at a time. So here's a bud for tomorrow and there's yesterday's. Uh, and uh, the stemless evening primrose is always really pretty when you see it. Uh, when you drive down the road to Santa Fe, it's often on the side of the road. People call it the Kleenex plant because it looks like a big white thing on the side of the plant. Already just starting to bloom, but it'll really come into its own in another few weeks. Is another shrub. It's a bush, has these wonderful uh, palm-like leaves, and this a dime now is uh, oh about this. It's about as big as this leaf. Gets these beautiful little sticky. They have little sticky things on them. Flowers. It's called wax currant, and it'll put out red berries that are edible in the fall. There are other current bushes, but this is the first one. Uh, it's probably blooming in White Rock now in some warm canyons and later on in Los Alamos. Already we're uh, to Mayflowers. Put this one in, because isn't it gorgeous? It doesn't grow in Los Alamos, but <coughs> on the way uh, to Pahaki, as you're driving along, on some of those hillsides, you'll see it. And this is another pea, uh, Lambert's uh, milk vetch. Uh, instead of being called an astragalus, which the other ones are, this is an oxytropus, which has a little difference, but it, from that's our point of view, it's just a wonderful, shocking pink pea, really lovely. On years when it's really wet, you'll get a whole hillside of them. When it's dry, you'll get one or two. Um, you can see them down in uh, Española and Chimayo and places like that too, but it doesn't come to Los Alamos, nevertheless. Um, now, uh, we're going to have a lot more plants now, so it's good if you've learned the early ones. I will tell you that, look, I'm showing you far, probably far more plants than you can get your arms around, but it's a good start. And at least you'll have the list so you can look in the flower book. If you haven't bought, bought the three volume set of Plants of the Hamas Mountains by uh, Terry Fox and Craig, you ought to consider it. Uh, they are, in terms of identifying the plants, probably the best book I've ever seen to, uh, to do this. And they're all about the plants that we have. Green thread. Green thread's really uh, getting good in May. Uh, and you can see that sometimes, this is over near, uh, uh, oh, my mind doesn't work very well. What's that trail that in, off uh, the road to Espanol? Uh, to, to uh, Bendelier, <coughs> Burt Mesa Trail. 
as, just as you start Burt Mason Trail, sometime in June, you'll see these all over the place. They're an annual. Often when you see big mass blooms like this, it's because all the seeds have decided to bloom at the same time. Um, and they, they like disturbed soil. And although this isn't disturbed soil, it's probably disturbed enough due to runoff. Um, green thread. Uh, and if you look at the back of it, I'm thanking Craig Martin for this wonderful picture. First of all, the petals aren't pointed. They have three points. Secondly, if you look at this thing that's holding it on, it's not a bunch of leaves. It's a solid spherical bowl, and it has these little fingery things sticking on it. So if you're not sure whether you have green thread or not, uh, this is a good way to tell. Uh, used to grow like crazy along the side of the airport, but the mowers always seem to mow it down just before it can grow. Still, there's a lot of green thread on the way out of town. You probably are all familiar with, uh, with paintbrush. Um, this is, uh, it can be orange or it can be this wonderful red. There are many different species, but uh, the one that's blooming now, uh, it's just started blooming in White Rock, uh, is, uh, oh gosh, it's got a, a good name. Field paintbrush, I think, something like that. Castilleja, if you want to say that, say it right, don't so say Castilleja. Castilleja was a, bo uh, a botanist from from Madrid, and so this one's a welcome one. You can see this one uh, now in White Rock, but later on up in town, uh, oh, if you walk up the Camazon Trail or lots of different places, you'll run across it. It's hard to miss. There are several different smaller evening primroses that are white. Uh, and I want you to look especially, it's sort of hard to see, but if you look at this thing, you'll see there's a little stem coming out and it has four fingers sticking out of it. That's the, uh, the stigma and uh, uh, the female part of the plant. And uh, I want, it, want you to remember those four things because there's a primrose we have that's really lovely. Uh, but it doesn't have these four-fingered things. We'll talk about that. Uh, this, uh, these evening primroses grow primarily in the pinyon juniper country, so you'll probably see them in, in White Rock. And that. There's three different species, and uh, they grow pretty much all summer long, um, and they're sort of hard to tell apart, so I won't go into that, but at least you know you're looking at a white evening primrose. Uh, here, a dime is about as big as this petal right here. Oh, here it is. This is called Sundrop. And uh, this picture doesn't show it very well, but here comes the stigma. And instead of uh, a four little fingers, it's got a fist, just a little round ball. Uh, these guys are great. They turn orange when they're done blooming. And uh, that's why they're called sun drops. Uh, typically a white rock uh, uh, plant. We don't see this one up in, in town, but it'll go right along the side of the road or out where you're walking along the mesas. Sun drops. Very, very different. You can see this on the, by the paved trail, uh, paved rim trail in Los Alamos. You can see it down in white rock. Uh, and it is a, uh, a plant called a broom rate rape and because it gets all together it's called clustered. Uh, there we have two different kinds one sort of blue and one sort of pink and you'll see it doesn't have any green so it doesn't make any of its own food it's what's called a saprophyte uh, parasite of a sort because underground its roots are wrapping around roots of things like grama grass and other things uh, to get their nourishment and it, but it has beautiful flowers as you can see from, from this one here these are pretty much done blooming. Pussy toes, there's, we have three species, uh, and uh, they're a little hard to tell apart, uh, but at least you can know they're pussy toes. And uh, they've got these little flowers. Surprisingly, these are in the daisy family and the composites, and uh, they're very uh, different. Some of them only have the male flowers, some of them, you know, it, it, they're, they're very confusing to look at them if you're trying to separate them into some of the different species we have around. Um, the Hamus Mountains has about five species, uh, but uh, for you, uh, 
just uh, calling them pussy toes, I think, is good. And they'll be blooming. They, they, these uh, plants are right flat on the ground, and they grow in masses. And um, then these plants, the flowers, come up on stems without leaves. Now, here's uh, an interesting one. A dime here is about this big. Although these plants can be small, they can be only just this much. They have a lot of basal leaves and then they shoot up these little thin stems and have these white flowers on them. And so when you see them and they're not in full sun, you just see the white flowers, you don't see the stems. And people thought, well, that looks like, that, that looks like stars in the sky, rock jasmine. And septentrionalis, uh, you know what the seven stars in the sky are, the Big Dipper? So this uh, alludes to the fact that we're in the northern hemisphere where you can see the Big Dipper and that these guys look like stars. They can get fairly tall, but usually they're not. And if you go all the way up to the tundra, they're a little tiny. They're even smaller than this, where in, in, uh, this is a few inches tall. Uh, so they can have, and they tend to grow in little clusters. You can see them in most of our side canyons. Uh, and then of course, uh, the one that everybody loves in the spring, this beautiful one-sided penstemon. Uh, uh, pent penstemon sort of means five stamens. Uh, and uh, the, it has four real stamens, and then it has sort of a tongue that sticks out. Um, as you can see, the butterflies love it. Uh, and if, in this particular one, uh, all the flowers come off on one side of the stem, so that's why it's called one-sided. And in May, this thing is just all over. If you take the uh, the, the trail of, uh, I should write all these things down because my mind doesn't work well enough. When you go out uh, toward uh, uh, North Mesa and Baraka Mesa, you, you get to the that little roundabout and you take that trail down that, can, that canyon, whose name we all know, but it won't pop into my mind. And that one on the left, especially the left-hand side, there's lots and lots of it. But you can see it on the Camazon Trail, lots of different places. And it grows all the way down to the, by the Rio, down in the canyon. You'd never expect it to find it down there, but it's down there too, along with its cousin, James's Pencil. Um, but that's one of our big uh, beauties. This last year, we had so much water that we got these great blooms. This is on the, tr the perimeter trail under, under LA uh, Mountain. Uh, but this is Perky Sioux. It's probably our most common uh, little yellow daisy. The, 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 the petals aren't pointed, they're toothed. And uh, the, the, it's called Argentia, that's Argentia, that's not spelled right, um, because the leaves have silver hairs all over them, so it's silver perky so if you want to call it that. By the way, these are some of those one-sided penstemons growing with them at the same time. But this was spectacular this last year, and so it's worth, worth going out to see if you can find them again. The perky sue will bloom a lot, and then it'll sort of go into eclipse. And then in the late August and September, it'll start blooming a lot again. But probably most of the summer, you can find it somewhere. Now we get into buttercups. Uh, buttercups are these uh, flowers which have petals that are shiny. Uh, most plants don't have, sh they're matte color, your matte, matte uh, surface. But here uh, in, the, in the buttercup, these petals are shiny, and that's how you tell buttercups. And this one's plain buttercup, it has a very small uh, flower. Uh, a, a dime is uh, uh, probably about as big as this leaf right here. Um, and one way to identify is the base leaves look like this, like somebody's hand with, with their knuckles. But the leaves up the stem are long, thin guys. See, if you look over here, they're long and thin, and down here, they're like the, those. So that's how you, and, you, know, you find it. When it goes to seed, it has this, this corn-like cob of, uh, of seed pods. Um, sort of semi-moist areas, uh, side canyons up in Los Alamos. <clears throat> the other one is tadpole buttercup. Uh, it's interesting that they call it tadpole because rana is the uh, Greek word for uh, frog. And why all these kind of things are called frogs, I don't know. But you can see how shiny the petals are. Flowers are a little bit bigger, has uh, um, 
very interesting uh, finger-like leaves. Uh, and this guy is very rare in the state, but in Los Alamos, almost any north-facing uh, slopes, in the canyons up in, up in the town side or over toward Wahi Canyon, anywhere like that, you'll find this guy, uh, these guys blooming. Uh, very nice little plants, uh, uh, Rendia Canyon, lots of other places. And uh, you're, what you don't know is that while it's very common, <clears throat> it ain't common most places. This is not a very common plant. Uh, again, in Rendia Canyon, uh, there's uh, a mustard, which is uh, common, vulgar means common, Barbarea, yellow rocket, and it has lots of uh, bunches of little four-petaled yellow flowers all over it. And the leaves are long leaves that have little side leaves to them. It only grows where it's going to be wet. It doesn't have to be wet all the time, but it has to be wet some of the time. So it's usually in stream beds or places like and it can get two, over two feet tall. Quite a, quite a handsome plant. I remember a year or two ago, there was part of the, uh, the stream bed uh, along the Dot Grant Trail that was covered with hundreds of these things. Now, I put this in because it's the only early onion. We have three main onions. We have nodding onion, which blooms uh, late June, July, and August. And then up, in the, uh, in the, up near the ski hill and around toward Kenyatta Bonita, we have Geyer's onion. But this is an early spring one, and again, not very common. I only know one place that it grows. To see it, you have to go out Powerline Mesa. You have to walk all the way out. And then finally, instead of going to the overlook at Powerline Mesa, you take the road to the right. It's going over to the trail that goes down into uh, uh, Antro Canyon. Uh, and along that, on the right side, you'll find this guy. So that's where these guys were, were photographed. It may be other places, and if anybody else finds it, I'd love to know if it's uh, anywhere else in the county. Uh, Delphinium wootens larkspur, Delphinium wootenai, is a fascinating plant. This is about two feet high, and I wish it was in better focus, but you can see it's a larkspur with this big spur here. And you can also see that it's sort of pink. Most of our lark spurs are blue. Uh, and this one comes up uh, in May. And for years, I hadn't seen it. And we were wondering, we had people out looking for it, and we weren't finding it. Last year, after the rains, it came up everywhere down there. It was all over the place. It was just sitting there, not blooming, because there wasn't enough water, but it was growing. Uh, one place, you could see 100 of these blooming uh, in uh, 20 or 30 feet around. Uh, and so it's always a tree, but it'll be on the mesa tops uh, in White Rock. And it's always a treat to find it. There are gonna be lots of cactuses, but the one that blooms uh, pretty much earliest, and I think is the most fun, instead of all those red carrot cup, uh, carrot cup cactuses and what have you, and pink ones, what have you, here's one that's yellow green. Veridif, this should say Verida floris, ah, another typo, meaning green, Verida, green, uh, you know, like, like Giuseppe Verdi. Remember Giuseppe Verdi? It sounds really neat. His, really name, his real name in English is Joe Green, Verde. So Verida floris means it has green, yellow green flowers. The, a dime here is about this big, about, you know, so these, these are little ball cactuses, which you see. We have another ball cactus like this that gets pink flowers, and it'll be blooming probably in June. Again, a white rock plant. Um, this one uh, you're probably familiar with because it starts blooming in uh, mid-May, and then it just blooms all year long. And uh, it's a columbine, gorgeous columbine. Uh, and, uh, it doesn't have the extra little petals on it that stick out like our blue columbine, but it's a columbine nevertheless. Uh, in the woods, uh, you know, Freeholders Canyon, uh, uh, lots of different places. Now, here's one that's a really a May plant. We have a lot of flea banes, but this is my favorite. 
A dime is about as big as the flower. And the petals are tend to be pretty big and there's not a whole lot of them. And it grows in little clumps of uh, fuzzy looking leaves. Uh, it again is not very common, although you can find it all the way up uh, on top of Parito Mountain uh, in the meadows up there. But it's more common here. You can find it uh, uh, in Acid Canyon. You can find it uh, one place on the Dutch Cowan Trail. You, there's a lot of different places where this thing will show up. But uh, sometimes uh, the flowers are very blue. And that's why it's called Blue Top Flea Bane. Not always. Uh, if you want to go down the, uh, the uh, ranch trail, that goes down uh, uh, from Acid Canyon down to, uh, follows Acid Canyon down to, to uh, uh, what is that big canyon? Pueblo Canyon. Uh, before you do that, as you're walking along the rocks on the top, before you start down, there's lots and lots of this. Uh, so it's well worth finding a very pretty plant, very handsome plant, but has big petals. Now the next one, has little tiny petals. A dime is bigger than this flower. Uh, and you'll see this one uh, doesn't have uh, any, any leaves on the stem, you see. And it's a, like a biennial. Sometimes it grows in big clumps. Uh, but one of the reasons it grows in clumps is it will send out runners that will then hit the ground and grow another plant. They're called stolons. And so they're like, uh, uh, it's called flagellaris. You want to flage flagellate yourself with a whiplash or whatever. That's because it gets these uh, ones that, that, that do that. Um, petals aren't very large. Uh, uh, the flowers aren't very large. Petals are very small. Um, but that's uh, it. And it, again, grows, uh, it has a cousin. Um, that grows in white rock that's just slightly bit different. It's just amazing. If the little hairs on the stem stick to the stem and sort of point straight up, then it's flagellaris. If they stick out sideways, then it's tracei. I don't worry about that. You can just call them all whiplash flea bane if you want. Um, of uh, both common uh, nice plants in Los Alamos, I estimated a few years ago that there were a million of these flowers growing uh, in the county, uh, is Wooten Senecio. It, the petals don't have teeth, they're rounded and pointed, right? Has these big fleshy leaves underneath and it grows in these clumps. And you'll see Wooten Senecio just, just everywhere. Uh, it's less common in white rock, much more common up in the hill than up into the mountains. And it can go all the way up in the mountains, uh, blooming later and later in the year. Wooten Senecio is a, a real friendly one. After the fire, with the fertilization from the ash, Wooten Senecio grow, grew in huge bunches all over the place. It was really something. Sometimes it's just one or two stems like this. This one's sort of in between. Now, here's another one that only grows in one place, but it's really well worth going out. You walk out Deer Trap Mesa, you know, you get out to the end of Deer Trap Mesa and you look down. Well, just climb down the rocks and go on out and climb up on the next little mesa-like thing. Um, actually, that one you walk beside and go back down and climb up on a third mesa. And then you have to walk halfway along that mesa. The great mystery is why it only grows on the, on the eastern half of the mesa, not the western. Uh, if you go up to a place like Ghost Ranch or something like that, you'll see it. And if you go to Utah, this plant's all over the place. It grows in little uh, things. A dime, again, is about as big as this flower. Uh, and it grows, it has really deep, dense, solid roots. So it can withstand a lot of drought. Uh, but the, the little thing that holds the petals Looks like it was glued together. It's sort of shiny. It's not sticky, but it looks glued together. These leaflets don't stick out. They're not loose or anything. They're really stuck together. But you'll see it out there uh, on top of that mesa. Uh, I found a few on the next mesa to the south, but mostly it's here. I found 500 of these plants. So once you get out there, it's all over the place. 
it's a wonderful early May hike to walk all the way out there and see these. <clears throat> um, and know that it's so common in Utah, but we're lucky enough to have it in Los Alamos County. Only place in the Hamas that it grows that I know. And finally, uh, the uh, um, uh, yuccas, um, there are two with the very thin petal, uh, leaf, leaflets. Um, they used to be called angustifolia. Angusta means narrow, narrow leaf. That turns out to be east of us. And then it was called Glauca for some reason, I don't know why. Um, and uh, that's in Eastern New Mexico. This one's called Bailey's. Um, and uh, it gets very beautiful flowers. Uh, this is banana yucca, as you might be aware, the, the much bigger, uh, thicker leaves. And all these little stringy things, the Indians would strip, you get all the flesh out and get all those strings and make rope and threads and all sorts of things with it. Uh, supposedly you can make soap out of it and wash your hair. These plants are uh, uh, in the lily family, and they have the interesting thing that each species has its own little moth that pollinates it, and nothing else pollinates it. If all those moths died, you wouldn't have any more of these plants. They would all die out. So it's an interesting symbiosis, and it shows why uh, we have to keep our insects as well as uh, if we want to keep our plants. Both of these uh, grow up in, in town site if you, as you're walking out on Deer Trap Mesa, for instance, or lots of other places, you'll see them. Uh, and they extend down into White Rock. So um, that's it. Uh, I probably showed you far more plants than you can remember, but at least you got to see some really pretty ones. And uh, uh, I'll just sort of go back. So you look at them as you go. Thank you so much, Chick. That was wonderful. I've seen a few of those out in White Rock, but I'll be looking a lot closer for them um, now that I, I'm a little more familiar. Well, so you, uh, the one thing is uh, once you get the sheet of paper that tells you uh, uh, where to uh, where in, the, in those floors, uh, those books, uh, you can uh, come back and remember them. Oh yeah, I remember seeing that one. Or I remember seeing that one. And a little bit of practice. Somebody asked me how I could tell all the different goldenrods apart because they're so very difficult to tell apart. And I said, well, after you've looked at about 10,000 of them, you start to get a feel for them. Uh, I don't expect you to go that far into it, but these kinds of things, uh, the clematis, you'll just see it and enjoy it. Um, the fender bush is always a surprise when you see it. Uh, but it's a beauty. Um, golden peas and the golden smoke are pretty common. Um, this one you don't see too many of, but it's there and uh, early. It's always fun to find this one, even though you know it's uh, something that the plant doesn't like because the plant wants to look like that. Um, these are really interesting. Mountain lovers all over the place uh, in the Ponderosa, um, evergreen, you can see it all winter long, but People don't usually notice the flowers because they're so small. Uh, and uh, the, the Oregon grape, uh, you'll see lots of that. We have another one that grows as a little shrub and it blooms later in the year. And it's in the woods <coughs> here and there, uh, but I think it's an escapee from people's gardens. Lots of people have that one in their gardens as little shrubs. Um, Kanicka Nick's always nice. Finally get some berries on the end, but of course if you see the berries you have to look around to see if there's a bear because the bears do eat those. Really uh, everywhere you look an interesting plant. Uh, you just have to look a little carefully. I always love these cranes bills seed pods. The right, the right to Burbank is, uh, it'll, it can some, sometimes you can find it in February down there. Little tiny nettles milk vetch and the bigger Missouri milk vetch. And Easter daisies were, uh, sometimes they bloom quite late. I've seen them uh, out uh, on Deer Trap Mesa, you know, way off in July. What's it doing now there? But uh, it's one that got, late, got up late in the morning. The, the, the yellow mustards, this is uh, sometimes a real pest, but uh, it's 
there and worth looking at. Field to listen, you don't see much of it, but uh, and that little, uh, just before you turn into the Blue Dot Trail, to, to drive to the Blue Dot Trail parking lot, that little uh, nondescript uh, uh, piece of land between the walkway and the road has uh, five or six different species of plants. The hidden flower is always great to see. And uh, the beautiful pasque flower. I have to look here. I can't believe I call it clematis. That's a, <laughs> who would put a name? That's that vine. This is our past flower. It's funny. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. And then finally, Constance's wafer parsnip, which right now, when you find it down in White Rock, will look like this, has these winged seeds and this beautiful uh, lace-like leaves, very gray with the, you see this whole dead area and suddenly there it is. I'm noticing though, that I left out, I can't believe I did that, huh. Down there is another one. If you walk along the rim trail from the Blue Dot trailhead, uh, walk along the limb trail. When you get out to that flat area, you'll see it. It's got darker green, shiny leaves, and it's got little uh, little uh, bunches of tiny yellowish flowers. And that's Chimaha. The uh, Hispanic ladies in the valley collect the leaves uh, for salads. It tastes like a very strong flavored parsley. I invite you when you find one to just take off a bit of the leaf and eat it. Uh, and it's related to this one. The leaves, the leaves look something like this. The plants are about the same size, but instead of being sort of blue-gray uh, with these kinds of flowers, it has a little stem with a, a head of like Queen Anne's lace of little yellow flowers on it. And that's a Fendler's uh, uh, wafer parsnip. And I cannot believe I didn't put that in. Oh well. So there we are. I guess time for questions. Yes, Chick, we do have a few questions. Um, now we, could I, all, we could all sing the song together. We <laughs> yes, it would just, we'll just do a big round of the flowers that bloom in the spring, Charla. <laughs> uh, so there, there are a few questions. Uh, and if anyone has any others, um, please go ahead and type them into that chat. Uh, but um, the few that we do have, uh, and, a, and a couple comments as well. Uh, one person says they learned that wafer parsnip is also called a biscuit root. And I actually like, um, like to know why. <laughs> um, uh, if there's a reason for the biscuit root, does, does the wafer parsnip have a, an edible root portion? I've never heard it called that. Biscuit root is a plant called lomatium. It's related, they're very closely related. Uh, they're all in the parsley family. Biscuit root's very common in Utah and uh, some other places, but I don't think we have, if we have biscuit root in the Hamas Mountains, it's not very common. But in, indeed, uh, I think the Mormon uh, settlers did use the roots for something. All right, um, and then, uh... Craig just chimed in with a, a couple other um, locations. Uh, so the field alasum, 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 yeah. um, is also found on the slope below Pajarito School on Arizona Avenue, and it is blooming now. Uh, Golden Smoke is blooming along the Blue Dot Trail now. And he I says- I can't believe this. He says, Bio Canyon is a good place to find the one-sided penstemon. Uh, Craig also Bio says he, that's the name of it. I couldn't, I couldn't say it. Thank you for saying that. Craig also says he has a, um, a Chimiha photo, photo up on his screen. If you'd like to see, or do you want to share your screen again, Chick? Uh, I just wanted to show the field to list again. No, you can uh, put his screen up and show it. That would be great. Thanks. Thanks, Craig. All right, Craig. 
I'll go ahead and make you the host so you can share your screen now. And then maybe just one more question while we're waiting for that. Um, someone asked, what type of pollinators visit Kinnikinnik? That, you know, that's a very perceptive question because you can imagine it'd be very hard for a pollinator to pollinate a little thing like that hanging upside down. And uh, I'll give you the authoritative answer, I don't know. Um, I would think they would be small fly-like things that might actually be able to get in there. Uh, All right, so I unmuted Craig. Craig, can you hear us? I, I hear you, I think. <laughs> okay, well, um, so we see your <laughs> screen now. Do you want to... Oh, okay. Okay, that, that, that's the Chimiha or the Fendler's spring parsley that's blooming in White Rock along the uh, rim trail in Overlook Park right now. Yellow flowers, very glossy leaves, um, very similar shape leaves to the wafer parsnip because they're both in the parsley family. Great, thank you for that addition. Um, and then let's see now i can let's bring back maybe um chick's screen chick if you want to go ahead and share your screen again and i will ask another i think we had a couple more pollinator questions because you ended with the yuccas um do those yucca pollinating moths also pollinate other flowers or are they specific to the plant? yes they're specific that's another very good question they're specific uh, if all the yuccas died, the moths would die. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. They lay their eggs actually in the in that plant. Do you know Thanks what type of moth those are? Picture. Thanks for that great picture of the chimaha. That's that was just right. Do you know what types of moths those are that are pollinating the yuccas? What types of moths? I think they're called yucca moths. I don't know. Cool. Something to look up later. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, we had a few people that really just wanted to say well done and, and to thank you, Chick. Uh, let me do double check and see if there's any other uh, questions that came in. Um, oh, that's right. Um, Craig had also said that the paintbrush you were looking at and the, the name you were looking for was Foothills Penstemon or Foothills. Foothills paintbrush sorry foothills that's right thank you craig <laughs> okay uh and one more question um how do you tell the difference between a male and a female flower um oh let me see um i'm trying to find a flower that you could um uh, you could see that um I know which flower I want. Probably best to tell it in a, well, here we can tell. Uh, this part right here is the female part of the flower, and these are the pollen parts. Um, and uh, uh, well, here well, it's very hard to see these these things um but if i find the right plant uh it'll be oh i know a really good one if i go to the uh if i go to the aha uh -huh. all right we'll remember that well, that one sorry go ahead well you can see this thing with the the four fingers that's the female part, and all these guys have the pollen on them. Some flowers, you'll look at the flower and it doesn't have that, or it'll have that and it won't have those. Uh, and so that's the female and the male part of the flower. Okay, so if anyone else has any other questions, um, you can you can type them in real quick, but I do, I do see that it's after eight o'clock, so if anybody needs to go, um, 
I'll just I'll just let everybody know that uh, that you know if you'd like to join us again, uh, our next scheduled talk is this Friday night at seven o'clock. That'll be an astronomy talk about New Mexico's telescopes and observatories. And you can always visit the Peak website for more information and to register for things like that. Um, yeah, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Do look for that email with the link to, to the survey, as well as Chick's um, list of plants that you saw here tonight. And we, will, we do also have the, um, the recording of this talk, so we'll, we'll try to have that up uh, on our YouTube channel soon. And if you have any other comments or questions, you can always reply to those emails that you got today. And uh, yeah, and I'll just say thanks again, Chick. That was a, a wonderful presentation. And yeah, thanks again, everyone else, for, for tuning in and have a good night. Well, it's a good time to get outside away from all the other people. And uh, none of these plants have been found to have coronavirus. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, a very good time to get out. Um, it's already getting warm in White Rock. Uh, a really good time to to get down into White Rock Canyon if you're or along the the rim down here to see those first blooming flowers. I've had a couple of comments about um, about the super moon that's coming up. Uh, do get outside and see that tonight. It was a, a spectacular rise over the Sangres. I hope that everybody was able to see it. All right, thanks again, and thanks everybody for supporting Peak. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thanks, Chick.